f of g of x. Now this is the the more general way of expressing you know, these composite functions. So f of g of x means that into the f function we're going to insert the g function, which is x squared minus 1. So g of x is x squared minus 1. And now I'm going to take this and plug it into f, which means I'm going to replace x with x squared minus 1. So this becomes 1 over x squared minus 1, and then minus the other 2. And then we can simplify a little bit, so it's 1 over uh, x squared minus 3 is the outcome there. So this is the combined uh, composite function f of g of x. And, uh, and just to complete this, let's reverse that process. G of f of x means into the g function I'm going to plug in 1 over x minus 2, the f function. And so um, f is this, and now it's going to be plugged into here, which means I'm going to replace x with 1 over x minus 2 squared. Well, I'm going to replace x with 1 over x minus 2, but it gets squared because that's what g does. g takes an input, it squares it, and then it subtracts 1. All right, so let's see, we could... Um, uh, it's a little messy, but you know this can be um, manipulated in various algebra ways. I think I'll just leave it as it is. It uh, this is probably about as simple as we we want. We could uh, multiply this out and, and combine it with the one. It's possible to do that. I'm not sure there's a big gain in the simplification there, but you'll find that certainly this expression and that expression are not equal at all. So. Um, all right, now, um, just I should tell you, alert you to how the book notates these, and, and there's, of course, nothing wrong with it in the textbook. Uh, I don't do that in my book. I, I do what I'm doing on the board here. And um, the textbook uses something that is not very common, but uh, here's, here's me, and, and probably most people would write f of g of x this away. And the uh, textbook writes it this way, um, f of g, parentheses, and let me make that g a little bigger, x, all right? So this means f composed with g of x, I guess. Anyway, it's, it's a notation I've never cared for. Particularly since uh, I have seen in books where they're inconsistent about what this means. In some books, f of g of x, I believe, means g of, g of f of x, not f of g of x. So uh, that's another reason I don't care for that notation. It's, it's not entirely consistent from, from what I recall among books. So, But this, there's no doubt. That means the g function goes inside the f function. And um, whereas this means um, do G first and then do F. Okay. And uh, so I like this, and, and I'm going to gamble that you like it too. So, um, but the book will, textbook will write problems in this way, so you need to be able to interpret that. Okay. Now, in my book, or um, I have come up with some extra problems to, to practice, so because uh, I'm not entirely happy with the textbook on this, so um, be sure to, to look through there on that. Um, maybe it's on my website still. I, I can't recall. Uh, I think it is. I think it is. I, my website, uh, the book on the website is a rough draft, uh, which I last touched a year ago, and it's not complete. It's not a complete book, I'm, I'm sorry to say. So, um, Because I finished this book over the holidays. All right, um, well, that's the idea of these composite functions, and we'll see some more here in a minute. I'm going to um, move on to that case where f of g of x is equal to g of f of x, and, uh, which I said was, was quite interesting, so let's move on to that topic.